skin cancer from sun exposure is the number one cause of cancer deaths in the world. Next is lung cancer, caused mostly by smoking. With both, risk factors are easy to see. But the third leading cause of cancer deaths in the world, liver cancer, is harder to see. That's because it's caused by a virus. There are about 375 million people in the world who are currently infected with the hepatitis B virus who are carriers, and they're at higher risk of cancer of the liver and, and uh, chronic liver disease. Since his days at Walter Reed, Hilleman had sought a means to conquer hepatitis B virus, but it had remained elusive for one reason. It was virtually impossible to grow in the lab. Then, a young Baruch Blumberg discovered something unusual in the blood of infected people something the virus was making to escape recognition by our immune systems. Hepatitis B virus made large quantities of one particular protein that sat on the surface of the virus. These little bits of hepatitis B couldn't cause disease, but they could attract antibodies. As many as 500 quadrillion of these proteins would flood the bloodstream distracting antibodies designed to neutralize the whole virus. If these decoy proteins could distract enough antibodies, then fully formed hepatitis B virus could escape to infect more liver cells. It was a cunning defense. But Hilleman saw these excess viral proteins as the virus's Achilles heel something he could use to eliminate the disease from the face of the earth. The use of the Bloomberg knowledge uh, to make a vaccine, of course, you'd say, well, anybody could do that. Well, not really. It took an enormous effort. First of all, recognizing that the source of the vaccine at that time was going to be blood from people who were carriers. They were infected. Of course, you're handling blood that came from people with hepatitis B infection, which can kill you. That was not a project that a lot of people were gonna be willing to undertake. It required a whole new concept of how does one make such a vaccine safe. He had to take human blood. He then had to make sure that, that any possible virus that could have been in there was killed. He had to take this one protein, hepatitis B surface antigen, and purify it. He exposed the material that was going to be the end product to three steps that would kill any known virus, uh, formaldehyde, uh, pepsin, and urea. So if you use a thing and it killed in one step and the next step it would be killed and killed this it should end up to be deader than deader than dead and thus we had the so-called plasma derived hepatitis b vaccine a vaccine that was made from no doubt the most dangerous starting material that we ever used that i would argue created the safest vaccine we've ever used but just how safe would not be known until the vaccine could be tested in people Hilleman was at an impasse. Where to test a vaccine that can save millions of lives if it's safe, or possibly give test subjects liver cancer if it's not? A research scientist probably comes to the hardest point in what he or she will do when human testing is undergone. You have the responsibility that you might do harm this is not something for, for the faint-hearted. I remember him telling the story about he went into the cafeteria and rolled up his sleeve and um, got the whole management team in there and somebody injected him with hep B vaccine and he said, now I want you all to do the same. And they were scared. If you told me you're giving me a vaccine from human blood at that time, obtained from high-risk patients, I'd say, hmm, uh, maybe I can do it out my hepatitis B vaccine from my good old friend Maurice. No, no, that's, that's legitimate. That's a legitimate wonder. I'm not saying they didn't purify it enough, but until I see the whole protocol, I'm a little worried. And if I'm a layperson and I don't understand what it means, I'm very worried. 
he trusted the science, trusted enough to inoculate himself with this this product that started with human blood. So I think, you know, he, he voted with his arm, if you will. Human hepatitis B vaccine represents the most technically complex of any vaccine developed to date. This vaccine gives us, for the first time, an opportunity to prevent this great scourge of mankind. Maurice Hilleman had become the first person in history to invent a vaccine to prevent human cancer. Only he had the intelligence and guts and resources to do that. I don't think anybody else would have made that vaccine. It was on the market for five years, and it saved lives. But the use of human blood continued to scare people, and those fears would simmer until they had cause to boil over. A new disease known as Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, AIDS, was first identified about 18 months ago and now has public health officials worried. Researchers are now studying blood and other samples from the victims, trying to learn what is causing the disease. AIDS scared people to death. It was clear that certain groups were at higher risk, but because a lot of this was unknown, people would walk into a grocery store and they were scared to pick up a piece of fruit. There was fear, there was frustration, there was a lot of misinterpretation of how it was transmitted. Everybody was going to die, 100% lethality. It is spreading rapidly, cause and treatment unknown. It is a medical puzzle of enormous proportions. When the AIDS epidemic broke, of course, that really begged the question about using whole blood in a, a vaccine. The cause of AIDS wasn't known at the time, but the fear was <clears throat> that perhaps uh, there might be contamination of the vaccine with whatever caused AIDS. Use of the vaccine waned and Hilleman was powerless to prove its safety until the cause of AIDS was finally determined by 1984. Health Secretary Margaret Heckler made the announcement to a jammed news conference. The probable cause of AIDS has been found. And she introduced the scientist who led the team, Dr. Robert Gallo. A test is available for blood banks. The reagents are available to characterize anything now, and a method is available to isolate this virus routinely. Gallo and others identified HIV human immunodeficiency virus as the cause of AIDS. And Hilleman quickly showed that it was incapable of surviving his inactivation process. The vaccine was safe. But still, he found himself up against an enemy he could not defeat with science. He was dealing with perception more than reality. And the perception was that, that HIV was, was sort of hanging over this vaccine like a cloud, even though he had proven clearly that HIV couldn't possibly uh, survive the, the treatments that he had subjected that vaccine to. So ultimately, he had to abandon it. It was a tough period. I'm sure it was tough on the company because they invested uh, in making that vaccine. It was tough on Maurice himself. Uh, uh, it was tough on, uh, uh, on Roy Vagerus. Uh, but again, those were top-notch scientists who managed to come up with the alternative. The alternative? The new field of genetic engineering. The concept was to harness the manufacturing power of the world's smallest factories, living cells. Organisms like bacteria and yeast are able to share genes by trading rings of DNA called plasmids. These plasmids carry the blueprints that instruct cells to make specific proteins, like the protein Hilleman used to make his hepatitis B vaccine. By using a special enzyme to cut the plasmids, scientists could insert a gene that instructed the cell to make the hepatitis B surface protein. The new vaccine would be easier to make, easier to purify, and just as safe. The vaccine took time until it was accepted in this country. And then in the year 2000, it was taken to be a global product that is going to be offered to every child born in this world. It has been suggested that this may have been the, the single medicine that prevented the most deaths of anything that we have developed in the 20th or 21st century. 
The hepatitis B vaccine represented a series of firsts. It was the first vaccine using human blood as a starting material. It was the first vaccine made using recombinant DNA technology. It was the first cancer preventing vaccine of man. And it was the last vaccine that Maurice Hillman ever made. It was in many ways a culmination of what had been a lifetime of phenomenal achievement of making vaccines, of breaking new ground in many ways with every one of them.